comparing the imitation game to the theory of everything. Immediately hearing about the two films, I thought, oh, because they're biographical, they were both going to be something I could easily compare between what was better and what was worse. One has better director, the other one has better cinematography, or just all round acting. But after seeing The Theory of Everything, after such a long time of waiting, I realised you can't compare the two. The Imitation Game is one of my favourite films, purely because Benedict Cumberbatch's performance is outstanding. I loved how he was able to bring Alan Turing's character to life. The way Benedict Cumberbatch characterises Alan Turing is outstanding. The way, able, way he was able to ca um, characterise the whole persona about the stress, um, the heartache, the um, hardship that he had to go through in order to come up with the Enigma Code, and the people he had to face, um, who obviously shot him down for everything that he's seemed to value. Um, especially towards the end when we kind of th um, realised about um, the truth about his homosexuality and his later um, suicide because of the segregation that society had put on him and how they often had ideas saying that everything um, about being homosexual was wrong. And it just really pulled at my heartstrings just knowing that you know, Alan Turing was able to come up with basically something that was able to save Britain from the war. And after all his efforts, hidden, because obviously he couldn't say, they treated him so poorly and they just didn't realise and it makes me so sad and I think that's one reason why I was so emotionally trauma traumatised after watching the film. Going on to say the theory of everything, um, I thought, as said at the start, that there would be some sort of connection um, that would be easily comparable between the two films, The Theory of Everything and The Imitation Game, but seeing it only last night, there is a great contrast. When you look at The Imitation Game, it's more focusing on a one moment in time when he's actually coming up with the Enigma Code and he's trying to figure out, um, you know, a way through the hardship and the pain of people trying to put him down and say that, no, you know, this is not possible, and he's saying, yeah, it is and obviously he was proven right. If you look at, say, The Theory of Everything, you have um, the themes of romance, you have a whole story of Stephen Hawking from when he was at university in Cambridge um, after Oxford, and then back until sort of the time where he is now, and then that sort of journey, and then it sort of builds that story, which is just so incomparable to The Imitation Game, because at the end of the day, if you're going to try and compare them, you're trying to compare two people's lives, and I don't think that's sort of like a... Um, it's not something on my moral compass that I like to do, you know, one's better than the other because, say, one person survived and fought through things and the other person didn't because that's just so wrong on so many levels. I can understand now why Eddie Redmay won so many awards for his acting because it was just outstanding. I mean, I use outstanding for Benedict Cumberbatch because Benedict Cumberbatch is just one of my idols in terms of acting, but Eddie Redmay just brought it on so, so well. The whole thing was just tangible and I can't even begin to explain how evocative and important his role was in it. Just an all round good film. I think the cinematography was good, I love the use of shots, um, I think they were really effective because, um, for example, when Stephen um, had just gone up into a wheelchair and said this is only temporary, just before he did that, the camera had a close up on his hand where it was curled against the side, sort of like that. And it really kind of made me cringe, but it was also showing how his psychic disease was um, was sort of crippling him. And it's kind of those sorts of things which really honed in the sort of effect of motor neuron disease. One of the extremely insightful things I didn't actually witness through the film is how Stephen's condition was taking over him. He had a brilliant mind, but he was trapped in this body, and still is trapped in this body. And you can't, it kind of homes in on the fact that, you know, this kind of sort of body that we all have is just kind of this casing for who we are and I think that's a really deep message to take from the film and just take from life, just, just entirely in from like Stephen Hawking's life. 